Oh, hey, hi. good morning. Oh, I forgot my light. Welcome to. Uh, oh, hang on, hang on. Is it on? Hey, and yes, we'll yeah, try yeah, again. Yeah, good morning. Right. Yes, we're definitely Sorry, saying I'm good morning. I'm having a few kind of blanks this morning. This is what happens on Mother's Day when you provide breakfast in bed and allow for a nice quiet start. Stop the buttons off. don't get pressed. See how I slid that in there <laughs> just in the beginning? Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to uh, BMCH Live, coming to you wherever you are this morning from our home to yours. This is Plymouth Methodist Central Hall's live church this morning you are so so welcome and it's great to see loads and loads of people already logged on this morning see if lots of other um people have been spoiling their mums this morning on mother's day there's some lovely comments already in the chat morning to penny and paul um hope you're well saw some fabulous photos last night didn't we of oh mr Wittell. yes if you're on twitter <laughs> go and find Paul Wittell on Twitter, there are some are amazing, amazing photos like of Mr. Wittell in his youth. <laughs> Absolutely <looking> stunning. Right <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring Gareth in so that we can get his reaction oh, we've to <laughs> to those photos. Um, absolutely <laughs> fabulous photos. Hi, Gareth. Morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm just looking for the photos now. <laughs> 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 Good morning. We're thrilled you're here too. Really great to have everybody morning, joining this morning. Morning to Anita. Mm. Lots, lots of people logging on and commenting. If you are joining us this morning, uh, do pop a comment in the chat. Oh, say hello. Word. Oh, there <laughs> you go. Found He's found yeah, them. He's found them. That is a raincoat and a half, isn't it? Yeah, if it I'd is. had time, I would have downloaded them so we could all see them. We could Goodness share. Me. Yeah, indeed. I think. Uh, <laughs> Particularly the one sat on the car would be worth um, circulating to uh, uh, the wider world. But, um, Absolutely. We are. Absolutely. Um, yes, as I was saying before Gareth found the photos, if you are joining this morning, do pop a comment in the chat, say hello, tell us where you're joining from. It's lovely to know uh, where you are this morning as we get gathered together for worship. Um, and, and as we always say, please do click that share button. Um, pop a comment in and share it and tell everybody else that you're gathering for worship this morning and invite them to join us wherever they may be as well. Indeed. Indeed. Have you guys had a good week? We have had a lovely week, haven't we? It's been very busy this week. Lots of getting stuff ready and um, being very organised with Mother's Day present purchases, obviously. Um, nothing I last nothing minute to do about that. yesterday at all. <laughs> um, so it was absolutely nice, wasn't it? Very nice. Oh, yeah. got loads of messages. Loads of messages. How about you? Have you had a nice week? How is your um, yeah. family today? Yeah. Are they all right? Yeah, very nice indeed. Thank you. We're all, we're all uh, ready and organised and uh, plenty of time. So um, but I was woken at 6.40 a.m. by one of my uh, cool. children asking if they could wake up mummy to give them the presents. Um, so of course I said yes, yeah, fine. And, uh, <laughs> uh, no, so uh, yeah, so we've had a nice day here uh, and a nice morning so far. And uh, hopefully it will stay dry this afternoon. We might get out and see some fresh air. Yeah, yeah, yeah bit of a walk. Yeah. Definitely. Yep, indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Oh, I can see even Laura's commenting from the other room. Morning. Is she? She's watching. Laura and yes. the Higlets are watching. Higlets. We always get nice waves from your lot, don't we, in the morning before we go live? We stick the heads round. We do. Oh, yeah, I mean, in the olden days, in the olden days, they would have been here, wouldn't they? Sat on my lap, um, <laughs> saying hello to everybody. They've all gone shy now. They Aww. don't want to uh, star in the church videos quite as much. That's what it is. You see, it's all—it's all just so last season for them, isn't it? You know, live streaming, I suppose. It is. Yeah. Okay. I said a year ago was our first live stream. A year ago today, um, or this weekend, I think this was is... our first live stream. Oh my uh, goodness! Because, ah. and we. I mean, Oh yeah, they've appeared. Um, <laughs> monkey one. Hey! Two, I'm monkey one. Joseph, it's it's nearly eleven o'clock. Don't get dressed. <laughs> <laughs> what will the people think of us? Come on. Um, <laughs> I'm monkey one. Yes, you are. Go away. <laughs> Love you too. Lovely. Hey! Lovely. Okay. Right. There we go. Live stream yes, bombing. Anyway, back on the. No, it was a year ago when. Um, uh, we were at church and there was there was no restriction yet uh, but Johnny Libby um, stuck up his iPhone 
uh, on a yes. you know impromptu stand on the organ, and we showed it on our Facebook page. Just we, I mean, we we did it with about 15 minutes planning before the service. That was our first official live stream. A lot of people were yeah. already uh, taking their own precautions by staying at home, worried about what was coming. Um, that was the uh, the very first official one. And then by the following weekend, uh, we were doing this. Um, so. Uh, um, Crazy, crazy times. Yeah, we were t- we um, had a Zoom call with some friends last night, didn't we? Yeah. And they came to Central Hall for the first time, um, mm. and we were saying that seems like such a long time ago. But they said that it was right at the beginning of COVID, yeah. and um, yeah. well, that people were just well. a bit wet, just starting to be a bit wary of kind of hugging yeah. and. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's been them. what a year it has been since then. It is yeah. uh, incredible, isn't it? And. Um, uh, and I think, I, you know, part of it obviously is tinged with huge sadness, isn't it? And about all the things that we've lost, people we've lost, as well as uh, relationships mm. that have been um, strained because of the distance and restrictions, etc. And perhaps some relationships strained because of the intensity and closeness of them. Yeah. Um, but um, also it's been a, a year of incredible discovery. And without, you know, resting on our laurels or getting too kind of uh, cocky, cocky about this, um, actually, to think about what we've managed to turn out in the last 12 months mm. in terms of online worship is quite incredible. So um, uh, thank you to you two and to uh, uh, the Morrises and yeah, uh, other team, people, um, all of our musicians, mm-hmm. um, our tech team, um, the people that, that uh, do creative things, all of the people that have worked so hard to put something on every Sunday. It's really, really, really uh, great and your efforts are really appreciated, every single one of you. And and things like, a, a lot of it is unseen, you know, the mm. fact that bands have to meet up to, to rehearse and to film. And then um, there are people like Andrew Richards and yourself, Nick, who are mixing all these videos in the background. There are people like Paul Wattel providing backing tracks for people and having to work at those at home and then record them. And then they have to rehearse them again with other people. It really is a complex exercise. and so different from what we were doing 12 months ago. And um, so much of that is unseen, and people won't recognise that. It, it appears, you know, at my end, as a click on a button, watch it, isn't that very nice? And it often represents hours and hours and hours of work. So thank you to everybody that's contributed and will continue to contribute as we, because uh, we fully intend going forward to offer a kind of a hybrid approach um, uh, for both in person worship, that's what we're longing to get back to. But we'll continue to stream our services and our worship um, so that uh, people all over the world can uh, continue to join us uh, mm. and to uh, check us out. And we know, sorry, I'm into a sermon mode, aren't I? Uh, <laughs> last thing is, uh, we, know, We're just not. We, know from, we know from research before the pandemic, this is before COVID was even a thing, um, that the kind of digital uh, sharing of stuff was often the first approach people made towards the life of the church. They may yeah. watch online for three to six months first before they ever think about moving in uh, to, to uh, entering a building so it's our evangelism it's our pre-evangelism really yeah. by yeah. getting this stuff out online so we don't want to turn back from that uh, we want to increase that and see uh, more and more people join us in becoming a healthy mm. church so that good. transforms the that's world that's really exciting isn't it it's got a, right. a message from um, Susan Harris who said fill up your church now I've been listening for a whole year that's really great that you've been with us for a year Susan that's Wonderful. Amazing, yeah, indeed. It? I think we're on indeed. our what what we on forty sixth live stream. One of forty six. One of these. Okay. Oh no 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 we're not. We're on our fiftieth today. Yeah, fiftieth. Yeah, yeah, fiftieth. Fiftieth yeah. one of these. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Number wow. fifty. And of course, you can enjoy the entire back catalogue on YouTube. All <laughs> numbered. <laughs> I was looking at some of like the um, earlier ones the other day when I was kind of going through yeah. the, the playlist. And um, we've just got more and more haggard. Yes, the <laughs> hair's got longer. The, yeah. Yeah. My fringe is now non-existent, though, somewhere down here. <laughs> uh, there was a time, wasn't it, where we were excited and this was all an exciting experiment. Uh, yeah, um, remember that? Um, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Listen, we'll probably be doing this for three or four weeks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mrs Courtney used to take hours making sure the plant was in the right position and yes. all of that sort of stuff, you know. Yeah, mm. and I remember how we used to in the early days when we were we did live worship to start with, and then we were mixing some pre-recorded worship, 
you guys used to make sure you wore the same tops for recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's uh, completely <laughs> gone now. Yeah, we can't yeah, do them all in one take. Oh no, so. oh no, we recorded a song and the plant was in the wrong place. Do it all again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? How yeah. Seems to develop. But can I just say, I've kept a pot plant alive for a nearly, whole year. nearly two yeah. years yeah. now. Yeah. 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 Wow. So, Which is really impressive for me. Really My mum would be very proud. That is, um, <laughs> that is impressive. Yeah. It is. It, it has been a journey, hasn't it? I can remember that very first Sunday morning, sat here, and having and we did the the worship line. I was putting and, the words yeah, up, and you were putting the words up as. Switch. Oh my gosh! It was terrifying. Yeah. Absolutely terrifying. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. Of course, my my friend Stephen Beach, the vicar at St Budo, famously in Holy Week caught fire. Um, oh and yes. That was global, and uh, and still to this very day, from all around the world he's getting approaches asking whether people can use that video um sadly he didn't patent it and get royalties earlier on otherwise he'd be a very rich man oh my goodness uh, yeah. yeah i so, think um, some of you, the if you've not the... seen that just google vicar catches fire <laughs> and uh, the reverend stephen beach uh, who's a very good friend of mine um vicar at st Budo, uh, you'll see him catching fire during evening prayer uh during holy week last year my goodness, isn't that amazing? Look, somebody's just put in the comments as well. Literally, just found you as I've been scrolling through, um, wow. and it, yeah, that is the power of what we've been talking about, isn't it? That just liking and commenting and sharing, as Gareth said, this is how we connect with people. Yeah. And if you are finding us as you're scrolling, you are so welcome. Um, yeah, that's absolutely right. Indeed, you are. Um, I can't see who you are, but uh, from the technology we're using, but you are really, really welcome. Whether you've been here for the last uh, 50 weeks or whether you're here for the first time today, you are very, very welcome indeed. Shall we move on to yeah, our official okay. start? So thank you, Paul and Nick. They'll, uh, they'll disappear to go and press the uh, relevant buttons uh, now. Thank you, as always, for getting us ready uh, for worship today and gathering the people of God. It's lovely to see you. Uh, this is worship from Methodist Central Hall here in Plymouth. Uh, my name is Gareth, and we're broadcasting from uh, homes uh, across the city today. Um, and uh, as we uh, continue our worship online in this season, um, and I'll just say a bit more about how we're going to transition into the future uh, a little bit later on. So it's good to see you. You are welcome. We're aware that it's Mothering Sunday today, and uh, we know that for lots of people that is a day of joy and thanksgiving and uh, lots of fun. But for others of us, it's a day of regret and pain and loss um, and for all sorts of different reasons, uh, you know, hopes that perhaps have been dashed or uh, relationships that have been broken or uh, uh, lives that have uh, moved on and passed away. So we hold both of those things in tension and we recognise uh, that today. And the good thing is that wherever we are on that kind of spectrum, we look towards the one God who is full of love, full of mercy, full of grace, and full of kindness, who treats us not as we deserve, um, but uh, out of deep, deep uh, loving kindness towards us. So it's in that context then that we worship and we gather today to bless his name. So why don't you stand up wherever you are uh, or, uh, um, or sort of sit forward on, the, on the, the sofa and let's worship the Lord together. And Paul and Penny uh, are leading us today in our music. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. 10,000. Bless the Lord. Thank you. 
Lovely. Thank you so much, uh, Paul and Penny. Let's uh, pray together. Father, as we uh, consider your loving kindness towards us, we uh, realise that um, there are 10,000 uh, reasons to bless your name and then 10,000 more and more and more and more uh, forever and ever. Such is your goodness to us. Such is your loving kindness to us. Such is your mercy and is your uh, grace. Um, the psalmist said that uh, your goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our lives. And uh, we know that to be true. We know your kindness and faithfulness, Lord. We know your care and your support. Uh, we know how you provide for us and sustain us, how you bless us and how you keep us. And so we worship you today and we give you thanks, Father, for all that you have revealed to us about your loving nature and how rich and full you are in mercy. But Lord, despite all that you have offered uh, to us, uh, we recognise that uh, we uh, often are miserly with sharing your love with others, uh, that we are self-centred and we quickly cheapen your grace uh, by running back to lives of uh, sin and uh, lives full of mistakes. And so we take time conscious of your loving presence, O oh God, uh, to confess our sin before you. How we rejoice, Lord. The scripture says you are slow to anger, but abounding in love. And that as far as the east is from the west, that's how far you have removed our transgressions, our wrongs, our errors from us. Thank you, Lord, that in Jesus' death and resurrection, you pronounce finished over our sin and guilt and shame and you declare freedom and forgiveness and new life. We thank you for your grace and we choose to believe that you offer that to us now. We receive it by faith. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, folks. It's lovely to have you with us. Uh, wherever you're joining us from, this is worship on behalf of Plymouth Methodist Central Hall coming from our homes this morning. Um, and uh, we, my name is Gareth. I'm the lead minister here. And uh, we're glad that you can join us. We're so pleased that you're with us, whether it's for the first time or the 50th time uh, online over the last year. Um, I'm uh, aware that uh, some people will be wondering what our roadmap is out of lockdown um, as uh, we progress through the government steps. And I'm pleased to say um, that we're already open in the evenings for worship. You don't need to pre-register for that. Uh, you can turn up uh, worship at 6.30, doors open at 6.15 uh, for reflective uh, worship. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that during Holy Week, uh, so that's week beginning the 29th of March. We'll be offering physical in-person uh, worship services about half an hour in length at 7 p.m. Uh, every evening, Monday to Thursday. It's 7 p.m. Monday to Thursday. And um, it, uh, there'll be a, a service online or reflection online by Deacon Linda every night that week. If you're still shielding or you're not feeling comfortable uh, coming into the premises yet. On Good Friday, there are two services. Uh, 11 o'clock and 6.30 p.m. And we invite you to come to one of those each. It'll be the same service, more or less, repeated. And then on Easter Sunday, we are open uh, for a congregation again in the morning. Um, and from uh, that on, we will be open morning and evenings, 11 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. on a Sunday. Now, all of our services at the minute are uh, socially distanced uh, there with face coverings and um, we're not allowed to sing congregationally at the moment uh, but we're on the sort of road uh, back um, to gathering together as many of us are longing to do all right so evening worship's open now and on Sunday night Holy Week as well and then uh, and Good Friday and then on to Easter Sunday we'll be open uh, Sunday mornings and following uh, post Easter our afternoon Bible study will meet again in person at 2 p.m. on Tuesdays. And as I said in the, the chat beforehand, we're going to continue to broadcast uh, our material online as well um, uh, so that we continue to reach out to uh, a number of uh, people.
Um, we're really grateful to those that have responded to our um, just our little comments about giving. And there's a, a few donations that have come in from uh, outside the life of the church. We're really grateful for every single one of those. Uh, it does cost us, uh, you know, money to keep running uh, the church uh, when we're not gathering. And uh, if you do uh, want to give, uh, there's absolutely no obligation. But if you would like to give to our ministry and our work, then there's a way to do so uh, via uh, the text giving that is upon the screen. Uh, now, I think uh, that I'm uh, pleased to introduce our um, video guests this week. You'll remember that we're just working through our, our way through the congregation and getting people to share where they live uh, and where they work um, Monday to Friday and how they live out their discipleship. And uh, really pleased that uh, Ian and Catherine Hodgins are um, our guests this morning. So I will hand over to them. Hello, my name is Catherine Hodgins and I'm married to Ian. And we have four children, Lucy, who's currently in university in Southampton, Eleanor, who's in her A-level year. Christopher, who's doing his GCSEs and Charlie, who's in year nine. And I first came to the Methodist Central Hall when I was a teenager. And we returned about 18 years ago when we moved back to Plymouth. And I love it. I absolutely love it. I love the people. I love the worship. I love the atmosphere. Actually, this time tomorrow, we're both on holiday from work. It's Catherine's birthday tomorrow. So neither of us will be working at all and hopefully having a relaxing time at home. But normally, though, uh, my work is as a GP in Buckfastley Medical Centre. And usually on a Monday morning, I'm juggling, talking to patients over the phone, sometimes bringing them into surgery, supervising, teaching medical students, as well as dealing with the seemingly endless tasks in general practice, like, uh, like looking at letters and authorising prescriptions and making lists of patients to call in. And I'm a practice nurse um, in a GP surgery in Stonehouse. Uh, we care for patients of all ages. Um, I might be immunising babies uh, one minute, um, seeing a patient and monitoring long-term conditions such as diabetes or doing a dressing all in the same morning. Um, the practice also provides outreach services to the homeless and we care for a large number of patients with drug and alcohol problems. And we'd like you to pray for all the staff working in general practice. It's been a, a, an interesting but very challenging year. And please pray for our patients, especially those who are struggling with addiction and mental health and uh, chronic disease, many of whom have been shielding for now over a year. And we'd also welcome your prayers for all our families, um, our children, particularly for their well-being and their future plans. Thank, Thank you. you. Wonderful. Thank you, Ian and Catherine. And uh, before I forget, uh, a huge happy birthday to Catherine for uh, tomorrow. Um, so we do hope that you have a, a lovely day together um, as a family. Let's uh, pray for Ian and Catherine and uh, the wider family now. Father, we thank you for Ian and Catherine um, and for uh, the children as well. We thank you for the gifts that you've given them and the roles that you've called them to in uh, healthcare and in the NHS. And we pray for um, their staff colleagues uh, facing such uh, huge pressure and weariness um, in uh, given the following year. Uh, we pray for uh, fellow GPs and fellow nurses that you would um, give them strength and encourage them as they continue to uh, work strenuously uh, to benefit uh, others. We pray for uh, uh, their patients, particularly those who are struggling with addiction and mental health issues and those uh, who have chronic conditions, who uh, therefore are shielding and whose lives are hugely restricted. We pray that you would ease their pain and that you would bring strength to their bodies and, uh, uh, and encourage them. And we pray for the families and the kids uh, and uh, uh, their future plans too. We put those into your hands and pray, Father, that you would lead them on with yourself and accomplish your purposes in them and in the whole family. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing uh, again together before we uh, come to God's word. Uh, above all powers, above all thrones.
to die Rejected and alone Like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall And thought of me Above all Above all powers Above all kings Above all nature Treasures of the earth There's no way to measure what you're worth Crucified Laid behind a stone You live to die Rejected and alone Like a rose Trampled on the ground Rejected and alone Like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall And thought of me Above all Lovely. Thanks so much, uh, Paul and Penny uh, and others. Um, just to say before we read God's word that if you can hear um, background noise in my house, I've got at least uh, my youngest child who's very, very unhappy and is having a tantrum upstairs. Um, so I can, even though she's uh, away with uh, other people, um, I can still hear her crying through the ceiling. So uh, if you can hear that, I'm very, very sorry, but um, uh, this isn't supposed to be a slick presentation uh, this is just meant to be uh, real so we come to uh, God's word uh, which today is from the letter to the Ephesians uh, chapter 2 and verses 1 to 10 these are wonderful words um, and we could preach like a whole sermon series on each verse I think so it's rich in theology rich in uh, its meaning and it goes like this this is Paul writing he says as for you you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh, following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But... Because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Praise God for those wonderful words. Let's uh, pray together, shall we? 
Father, we thank you for your great offer that you have made to us in Jesus Christ. And we pray as we look into these words now that you would um, renew in us a joy for our salvation um, or give us a, a great hope uh, that we can press towards as we consider uh, the wonderful claims of Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. So this uh, kind of passage um, is one that starts off kind of uh, fairly gloomily and then uh, kind of builds more and more into a sense of hope. The Calvinist tradition um, talk of uh, uh, of total depravity. And uh, I love that kind of phrase, the total depravity uh, of humankind. And um, that's informed by verses like these at the beginning of this chapter. Paul is speaking to a, a Christian congregation, maybe multiple Christian congregations. Um, and so he speaks of what the believers were before they encountered Christ. And it's a pretty gloomy picture. You understand why that phrase depravity uh, was uh, used. He, he says himself, Paul, uh, we were dead in our transgressions and sins. We were following the cravings of our flesh. We were objects of wrath. Um, you know, not pleasant and uh, not terms that we would uh, glibly use. But if we're honest, whether we're followers of Jesus or not, uh, we are only too aware of where we would be if it wasn't for Jesus. Because we know when we read these first three uh, verses of uh, this wonderful passage, uh, that actually that shines a mirror into our own heart and into our own soul whether we're walking with Jesus Christ or whether we're not. Because each of us have got the propensity within us to rebel against God and to follow the inclinations of our corrupt heart, uh, to follow the temptations that the evil one puts before us and to follow what makes us happy or makes us feel powerful or makes us feel alive. And of course, every single day we see the fruits of a humanity that is still yet to be redeemed. We see the fruits of a broken world. We see the fruits of a world that is not fully consumed with all of God. And even in this very last week, uh, we see, you know, violence, we see murder, we see um, that, uh, that that sense of uh, historical and cultural injustice against women, women and people of colour raised to the very surface of our society. And it just gives us a glimpse that without the redeeming purposes and power of God left to our own devices, uh, we would become a, a corrupt and rebellious people. Some of you um, older than I will remember uh, the, the book, The Lord of the Flies. I had to study it at school, at secondary school. And of course, it was um, uh, the, the story. It's not a very pleasant book. I found it, you know, a bit frightening, really. And the point of the story is it uh, of uh, a group of uh, children that are marooned on a desert island is to show uh, how uh, corrupt and how anarchic human society becomes when there's no sense of uh, guidance. It's a product of, you know, uh, post-war Britain and written in that kind of context, really, that sense that uh, we're all in need of something to uh, restrain us. John Wesley, the great founder of the Methodist uh, revival, uh, uh, was uh, uh, remembered to say that whenever he went, he would preach the law first in a place before he preached grace. And what he meant by that is that whenever he went to a place first, he would tell them uh, the errors of their ways. He would uh, want to make men and women uh, conscious of their sinfulness and consciousness of, of how far they had fallen and how estranged they were from God. Um, and, and of course, uh, what that did was it went to illustrate the amount of need that the people, his hearers, needed uh, of a saviour. And you see, um, uh, 
even though we know and live for Jesus, it's easy for us to slip back into our old ways. And because we're used to doing that, we can, again, uh, become uh, very familiar with that. And we can become very familiar with uh, uh, sin and estrangement from God. We can become uh, familiar with uh, bad habits and just say, oh, well, uh, well, I'm a human, you know, there and there and there. And this passage, amongst other things, goes to remind us the seriousness uh, of sin. It separates us. It creates a distance between us and uh, and God. And actually, when we consider uh, the state of our lives, we remember that every single day, if you like me, perhaps even every hour, we are in need of a saviour. It can feel uh, something like we're enslaved to our nature. Our propensity to sin over and over and over and over again is ongoing, if we're honest. And so, says one commentator, it is like Paul is saying, we are the living dead. And there is nothing ourselves that we can do about it. We cannot get ourselves out of the problem of sin. And so whether we're a Christian or whether we're not yet a Christian, never forget how far it is, uh, you know, from how far we have been rescued. Never forget the extent uh, of the distance between us and God that God has chosen to bridge in Jesus. Because it's when we consider our sin that we understand the depth of God's wonderful grace. We sing, don't we, sometimes, how great the chasm that lay between us. And that's to illustrate the distance between a holy and wonderful and loving God on one hand and a sinful humanity on the other. It is as the distance is as far as the east is from the west. And if we ended our talk there, um, we would be in utter despair. It would be the worst news ever. We're all sinners and we're all condemned. Hallelujah. Uh, wonderfully, there is this little word that breaks forth hope. Verse four, but or however. That can be a wonderful word, can't it? You know, you think of um, perhaps you're receiving a medical report. There's this wrong, there's this wrong, then this wrong. However, we can treat it. Next time you take the car in for the MOT, it's got a flat tire, it's got a problem with this, the exhaust is wrong. However, <laughs> I've got this and this that will fix it. So it can be a wonderful word. It's one of those hinge words that can also be used for the other thing. Uh, it can also be used to point to negativity, too. Uh, but here, verse four, but, but, you know, we're in this perilous state before God. But, you know, we're objects of wrath. We deserve God's eternal condemnation. We deserve an eternity estranged from God and all the things that emanate from him. We deserve to be locked away from those forever in the prison of hell. But However, God treats us not as we deserve, but because he is rich in mercy, he expresses great kindness to us in Jesus Christ. That which we could never do ourselves, atone or make up for the debt of our sin, bridging that great chasm between God and humanity, that which we could never, ever do ourselves, God has done in the cross of Jesus Christ. And as Jesus died on the cross of Golgotha, all of our sin, all of our mess was laid upon him. And as he spoke the words, it is finished, so it was. Sin finished. Guilt finished. Shame finished. God's anger and wrath finished. Turn not on us, but on his son. And so just as Jesus was laid to rest in a tomb, so our sin was laid there too, buried and gone forever. But as Jesus was raised up again on Easter Sunday to life, sin was left back in the tomb, dead and gone. But life is ours to live. Jesus 
resurrection demonstrated for us a new beginning. It demonstrated for us freedom and forgiveness. And through that Easter event, the death of Jesus and his resurrection, God showers us now with amazing grace and he assures us of a heavenly future. For when Christ is raised up from the dead, back to life, so we are raised up with him. We were dead in transgression in sin, dead like Christ was dead in the tomb. But just as God has raised him to new life again, a heavenly life now, seated at God's right hand, so we are raised up and looking forward to a heavenly future. What is true of Jesus is true of us. We inherit with him all of the riches of God's grace. And so we are no longer objects of wrath, but we are now objects of grace. God has done this for us and for all of humanity in Jesus Christ. God's grace is now freely available to anyone everywhere. Whether you're watching this for the very first time and have got no idea what Christianity is about, or whether you're long standing in the faith and have been watching week on week on week on week, God's grace is available to you, whoever you are, wherever you've been, whatever you have done, and we obtain it, receive it, through faith in God's Son, Jesus the Christ. 24 years ago, uh, Rob Frost spelt out this good news to me. <laughs> A few hundred others as well, but it was as though he was speaking only to me. And it is my joy and my delight to proclaim it and spell it out to you again today. And there are two groups of people that I want specifically uh, to listen uh, to this. There's two groups of people. The majority of folk uh, watching this will be uh, church members, uh, uh, you know, uh, people that, that live the life of Jesus. And I want you to rejoice in all that God has done. As you hear this old, old story, don't let your love and joy for the gospel grow cold. This is the greatest message on earth. It is the point of all that we do, sharing that message uh, with other people. It is our reason for hope in amidst the darkness of the world. It's found in this message about Jesus crucified and raised. You know, the first sign of spiritual decay is when you start getting cold and bored of the gospel message. Uh, ensure that you are thankful for God, delighting in God, praising God, rejoicing in all that God has done for you. And second group of people is anybody listening to this who has never understood this or heard this before. This is for you. God has emptied himself in Jesus Christ for you. God has cancelled your uh, sins at the cross. He's died, proclaimed it is finished for you. God allowed his son to suffer brutal punishment for you. Uh, Jesus dies for you. Jesus was raised for you. The way to heaven is open for you, not just the person next to you or the next person watching online, but for you. And you can receive all of God's grace, all of God's forgiveness and mercy through simple faith. In God's son, Jesus, who's called the Christ. Um, Tom Wright, a great New Testament scholar, tells a story of a man called James Herriot. Now, apparently, I did a bit of research in some history books. James Herriot will be known to many of you, but uh, it was before my time. And he was uh, a character, wasn't he, in, uh, in uh, the Yorkshire drama, All Creatures Great and Small. And there was um, it was a true story based on a country vet and uh, increasingly, increasingly as his fame and renown spread, uh, uh, people wanted to, uh, you know, took really kindly to him. One day, uh, James Herriot um, 
celebrating his kind of fame and celebrating how he uh, uh, was getting on in the world, took his wife out for dinner. And um, unbeknown to him, he'd left his uh, wallet at home. And so he arrived for, for dinner in this uh, lovely restaurant in Yorkshire, if there are any up there. And then he uh, sat down, had dinner, lovely evening with his wife and came to pay and realised he had not his wallet with him. Now, I can't remember how far back James Herriot was, but it may have been the olden days before things like credit cards uh, and that were uh, about. And he had no means of paying the bill. And he was ashamed. Uh, his whole reputation was built on being an upstanding, good natured citizen. And he was uh, petrified about having to take his wife um, out from this lovely table they'd enjoyed into the kitchen to uh, do the washing up. Uh, and when it came to the point of paying the bill, the, the, the waiter didn't just bring the bill waiting for payment, but he bought a receipt instead. And unbeknown to James Herriot, completely, um, you know, providentially, perhaps, uh, on this particular day, uh, somebody had heard that he was going to take his wife out for dinner and they had phoned ahead and they'd said to uh, the restaurant, whatever he has, I'll pay the bill. Imagine the relief. <laughs> You've got no means of paying the panic. Oh, what am I going to do to suddenly finding that the bill has been paid? That's such a silly and uh, such a small way of illustrating a great truth. That when we find that the bill has been paid, there is great relief and thanksgiving and joy. Jesus in his death on the cross and in his resurrection, has paid the bill and offers us the opportunity to enjoy the benefits of a grace-filled life. It's all on offer for us. It is by faith that we receive it. And then lastly, uh, we uh, move on towards the end of the passage. So we were objects of wrath. We are recipients of God's grace. So what do we do about that? Well, this passage actually doesn't leave us anything to do. It tells us what God has already done. Uh, but having received the brilliant, life-changing grace of God in gratitude, we put ourselves at God's disposal. Uh, we want to uh, to be his handiwork, his masterpiece, some translations uh, say, doing the good works which God has prepared for us in Christ Jesus. So it's out of gratitude for what God has done that we then willingly offer ourselves uh, to him afresh. You know, I, I do what I do in this uh, role, this job as a clergyman, um, partly well, mostly out of thanksgiving for what God has done for me. Uh, and because of that, I want to play my part in seeing a community formed uh, that tells others. It is the message of the gospel and sharing that with other people uh, that keeps me going uh, and motivates me to do uh, my job. And I want to just be clear um, with what I say next, you know, uh, caring for God's people is important and I do love the Lord's people. Uh, but I have to say, just looking after the sheep, stroking them and reassuring them, important though that is, for me, just it kind of doesn't cut it. Uh, creating a community that is accessible to others and helps people to hear the gospel, root it and live it out in their lives. That is what gets me up uh, every day. That's what keeps me from quitting and doing something that is better paid and is a lot less hassle. It is the message of the gospel, helping to introduce people to Jesus Christ, that is a vital and important part. Uh, in fact, is, is the focus, the important part of what we're trying to do. So we talk at Central Hall in Plymouth about being a healthy church that transforms the world. That's what we believe God has called us to be as a community of people. A healthy church, of course, is made up of healthy individuals. And we define, uh, you know, health. We're talking about spiritual health as a church that is growing in discipleship, in fellowship, in prayer, in uh, social justice and faith in action, in evangelism and worship. Those are the things that we identify as the key markers of a healthy church. 
But you see, um, we can sometimes at the minute in, in terms of discipleship and fellowship, we're particularly focusing on what it means to be a healthy group of people and a healthy church. That's absolutely fine. But don't ever forget the transform the world bit to healthy church in order, not that we have a nice, comfortable Christian community, a healthy church. Well, just that it feels nice and I can meet with my friends. No, a healthy church that transforms the world. And the world will be transformed by our speaking and doing in response to God's great grace. You know, we can bring nothing to earn our salvation, but our service for God and our willingness to live to his praise and glory is our offering of thanksgiving back to him. And that service may well be within the orbit of the church. I, you know, I love it when people give their time to the Lord's work here as part of their worship and as their thank offering to him. And there's plenty to do and help us, uh, you know, share the message of the gospel uh, as well. But it may well be for most people watching this that your um, uh, life of offering back to God will be lived in the world. And that's why I love these um, this time tomorrow little videos, because it's a reminder that uh, most of us live out our faith in the real world, as it were. And so what does it mean for you tomorrow morning to live a thankful, delighted, joy and grace filled life? where you are tomorrow what does it mean uh, to teach well uh, with a joy filled grace uh, gratitude filled at heart what does it mean for you to administrate in the office tomorrow and to be a witness in that place uh, what does it mean to live out your response to this great gospel within your family uh, where most people are not fellow believers you see, the idea is uh, that that living such a life characterized by the grace of God will bring transformation and hope where God has set us. And above all, it will point people back to the God of all grace and the God of all mercy, who, as I hope I've made clear to you today in some small way, longs to shower us with kindness and grace, because he is rich in mercy. God has so much uh, to give us. If we are far away from him, he is the one taking the initiative to bring us back. If you are far from God, if you feel like you're dead in your despondency and in your sin, uh, know today that there is a God of great grace who is on his way to meet you where you are, to gather you up and to rescue you and to bring you back into fullness of life with him. If you're wandered away from the Lord and you're watching this, uh, know that there is a God who has made a way back for you. If you're living close to the Lord at the minute, you rejoice in all that he has done. And all that God requires of us is faith that he is the God who he says he is here. We simply say, yes, Lord, I believe you. I trust you. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over my life. I choose to follow him today and to pattern my life after him from this moment on. And God, in his rich and incomparable kindness, in his wonderful mercy, will, I promise, not treat us as our sins deserve, but treat us as his friends, forgiven, loved and free. Charles Wesley said, amazing love. How could it be that you, my God, would die for me? This is good news, isn't it? Just because I know nobody answered, I'll say that again. This is good news, isn't it? And sharing this message of hope in Christ is the reason we do what we do. May God draw you closer to himself today as you respond to his great kindness in Jesus Christ. Amen.
we're going to uh, pray for ourselves and for others and so uh, we're going to remember in our prayers ben belsham who uh, continues to recover he's been in a hospital and then out again since we prayed last week so let's keep up praying for ben for a good recovery and we continue to pray too for david Locke, who's at mount gold who has got a long road of recovery ahead but we're grateful that uh, um, that we can pray for him still and uh, and please do hold david in your prayers uh, let's pray together Lord, we realise that one of the great riches of your grace is the ability to come before you in prayer. We thank you on this uh, Mothering Sunday uh, that you, uh, the perfect parent who uh, holds in your nature the, the both the, the, the characteristics of father and mother, is the one who Jesus says shelters us uh, as though we're under your wing. And so we pray for those of us that are battered down and weary today, that you would shelter us afresh under your wing, that you would draw us to yourself closely and surround us afresh with your love and your grace and your presence. We pray for people who Mothering Sunday is a real challenge, uh, people who are grieving, people who are working through uh, really bad relationships with uh, uh, mothers or maternal figures in the past people who have spent all their life longing to be a mother uh, but have never had those hopes met for these and so many other people in complex situations and relationships we bring them before you lord and we ask that you would shelter them too under the shadow of your wing reassure them and comfort them strengthen them and help them father uh, to face the challenges uh, and the scars of life. Pray too for uh, people that have been deeply stirred and affected uh, by uh, the recent events of uh, this week. We think of uh, the awful uh, murder of uh, Sarah Everard and all that that um, has represented for so many people. Uh, we recognise that we live in a sin-soaked culture where People are so often far more fearful uh, than they are, uh, than they do have a sense of freedom. And we recognise that that's more so for women uh, than for men. Uh, we pray for people of colour who uh, equally find themselves uh, often at the receiving end of injustice. And Lord, we pray that you would uh, help us to in, res in response, really, to living out uh, a Christ-soaked life, to be part of uh, making the world a fairer and more just place, a place where your kingdom is seen uh, uh, in greater measure. And we do pray for our friends, Ben Belsham and David Locke. Um, and we lift them before you. We thank you for Ben's return home and pray that, that he would stay home um, or rather than at hospital and that he would gain strength and that his infection would clear. We pray for David Locke that you would strengthen his body and that you would uh, revive and restore his soul, that you would grant him joy even in the struggle and remind him that you are the God who is forever with him and alongside him. And in the quietness and also the confidence of your presence, Lord, we uh, lift before you other people and other places that we know very much need your prayers at this time. And we pray for ourselves, Lord, that you would help us to delight in the wonderful message of the gospel and to receive and to walk in the freedom that you have given us in Christ. Uh, we recognise that we are not the complete package yet, that we're far from perfect, but we rely upon your great and wonderful grace again ourselves. Fill us up, Lord, with a joy at all that you have done for us that we might live to your praise and to your glory. 
we make all our prayers in and through the name of Jesus, our great Redeemer, who taught his friends whenever they gathered to pray the words that are on the screen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. In uh, response to all that God has so freely given to us, we're going to sing a hymn of commitment. Take my life. And uh, grateful, as always, to Paul and Penny for leading us. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love. Take my Thank you uh, so much. Reminder, if you want to join us tonight at 6.30, there's room to do so. You don't need to book. Uh, doors open at 6.15. Uh, Johnny Libby is uh, the preacher uh, this evening. So words from the New Testament to close. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy to the only God, our Saviour, be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. And the blessing of God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be upon you and around you and amongst you this day and every day. Amen. Have a great week, folks. Go well. <laughs>